Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in today's video we're going to be looking at a common problem where you may find you have to recreate your docker image. So if that sounds interesting let's get started. Okay so this video is about a common docker problem where the docker image can become corrupted and so we need to delete it and recreate that image. Now don't worry this isn't actually as bad as it sounds. The docker image is basically like a v-disk which stores all of the docker images which the Unraid docker service uses but this is non-persistent data and by non-persistent data I mean not like the user data that's in to do with that container, for example Plex, it's not the movies, it's not the watch history, or even the settings that you've put in, that is all persistent data which isn't stored in the docker image. And we can see an example of that in action if we head across to the server and go to the docker tab, and here we can see that MB needs an update, so if I click on apply update here, we can see here it's pulling down all the various layers, and with these layers, it will update the whole Docker image, making a new image for this particular container. Looking here, we can see it's removed the MB container. Then it spins up another container and then removes the orphaned image that's left behind. So each time we update a container, that whole container is actually removed and recreated. So each time we update a container, it totally removes the old one and creates a fresh one. And any updated container, of course it doesn't lose any of your user data, everything runs exactly as it did, because the docker images don't contain any persistent data. All of that persistent data is either going to be in your app data, or in one of your other Unraid shares. So any container on the docker page that you either update or even remove, it won't remove any of your important data, it will just remove the container itself. And all of these docker containers and images are stored on Unraid in a specific location, which we can see if we go to settings and then docker here. So all of your non-persistent docker containers and images are stored in this location here. And by default in Unraid, this is in a ButterFS vDisk. And some of you might be asking, what is a ButterFS vDisk? Well, ButterFS or BTRFS is a file system and a vDisk is a file which is a virtual disk. And so all of our containers are stored here. And just like when we removed a container, it doesn't get rid of any of our persistent data, removing the whole docker vDisk, that doesn't get rid of any persistent data either. And if we do delete our docker vDisk, it's easy to recreate everything and be back up and running in no time. Now you might be thinking, just why would we want to delete this image anyway? And what can happen sometimes is this file becomes corrupted, which can cause either individual containers not to start, or the whole docker service not started. So let's look at what these errors might look like. For an individual container, you might go to start it, and you see an error like this, saying execution error, server error. But this error isn't necessarily a docker image problem. You can also get this error if you've added a new container, and it's trying to use the same port, as what another container uses, you'll also see this error. So before you go recreating your docker image, just check the basic things like that first. So you've checked that and there's no conflicting ports, then go back to settings, docker, in the top right here toggle to advanced view, scroll right down to the bottom, check this tick box here where it says correct file system errors, and run a scrub on the docker image. Once that's done, go back to the docker tab, and try starting the container again. And if you still get the same error, in the top right hand side, toggle across from basic view onto advanced view here, then clicking on force update here will cause the container to be recreated. Sometimes this can help. So let's put it back to basic view and try starting the container again. Okay, this time it's working, so it looks like it's all good. Okay, but what if it doesn't work? And when you came back here to start it again, we got the same error. Well this time what we can do is we can take it one step further, we can click onto the container, click onto remove, make sure we've got this ticked, also remove image, click onto yes delete it, that will remove the whole container, now we can easily add it back by going to the bottom here, clicking on add container, where it says template here, click on select a template, and choose the container you just removed, 
And for those of you who are interested, this works because Unraid stores all of your filled out templates on the flash drive in the folder config, plugins, dockerman, templates, user. So this is the location where Unraid stores all of your filled out Docker templates, whether the container is still installed or not. So if I click on bin hex crusader here, it's going to fill in the template exactly as I had it before. So with that done, I'm just going to click apply. So now this is downloading the container again fresh. So with any luck, maybe it will fix the problem. OK, so with that done, I can see that the container is running. There's no error so far. So let's open the web UI and take a look. And Crusader is working fine. But if you weren't lucky and it hadn't fixed the problem and you went to start the container and you're getting the same error, well, probably the only thing we can do then is try rebuilding the Docker image. So as well as having problems with individual containers, we can also have problems with the whole of the Docker service. And that looks like if we click onto Docker, it will say the Docker service has failed to start. I'm going to settings here and going to Docker. We can see the Docker service is enabled, but we can't start it. And again, before doing the nuclear option and deleting the Docker file, do some basic checks. Turn off the Docker service and then turn it back on to restart it. And if after doing this, the Docker service still fails to start, well, it's worth us trying to restart the server. And if after a restart, we go back to the Docker tab and it's still the same, well, I think it's time to remove the whole Docker image and rebuild everything. So to recreate the Docker image, we need to go to settings here, then Docker and we need to turn off Enable Docker. We need to set that to No. And now under the section here, Docker VDisk Location, on the right hand side here, we're going to check Delete VDisk File. With that done, the button here turns to Delete. We need to click that and that will remove the Docker image. OK, so the Docker image is deleted now and we can tell there's no image here because there's well no button to delete it. So now enabling the Docker service will recreate a new Docker image. But if we want to, now's a good time if we wanted to up the size of our Docker image. We can specify the size here before starting the service and it will make the Docker image that size. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and make mine 30 gigs. OK, so now I'm going to start back up the Docker service by clicking Yes and then clicking Apply. So with that done, if we go back to the Docker tab here, well, there's no error now, but hey, all your containers have gone. Well, don't worry, that's perfectly normal. We can easily recreate all of the containers that we had before. And there's two different ways to do it. There's the manual long way and there's the easy automatic way. So we'll start with the manual way because we kind of looked at that earlier when we were doing our troubleshooting steps. We can click here where it says add container and where it says template here. So just like before, clicking select a template shows all of the containers that have previously been installed on your server. So again, I'm going to click on bin hex crusader here. We can see here that the template's fully populated. So clicking on apply will pull down the container with the original template and install the container into the fresh new Docker image that we just created. And that container is working just as it did before. So we could go through and install each individual container this way, or we could do it the easy way and use Squid's excellent community applications, which has this feature built in. OK, so let's go across to the Apps tab here. Now on the left hand side here, if I click on Installed Apps here, and then I click on Docker to filter just the Docker containers that are installed, I can see Binhex Crusader that I installed just a moment ago. But clicking here onto Previous Apps, and again, filtering to Docker by clicking on Docker, here are all of the previous containers that I had installed on the server. And again, Community Applications knows what containers you had installed because the templates of previously installed containers are kept on your flash drive. Putting a checkbox next to each container you want to install, or to choose all of the containers at once, just select all on page here. Then to reinstall your selected containers, just click on Install Selected Applications here, and when prompted, click Yes, Install them. That will pull down all of the containers and reinstall everything back to how it was. Now, obviously, this can take some time, so I'm going to fast forward this and skip forward in time to the end to save you getting bored watching that. Hey, Doc Brown, what are you doing here? I said you could be in the last video about macOS and Time Machine because that, well, it kind of seemed relevant. 
When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. No, Doc, seriously, this is meant to be like a semi-serious YouTube channel. You can't just turn up every time I say I'm gonna speed up and go forward in time. People are gonna get really fed up with lame jokes like that. You know, I bet there's even people in the comments now saying, hey, that's just not funny. Space Invader, get back on track. Okay, okay, sorry about that. So when all of the containers have downloaded, just click onto the done button here. And then if we go back to the Docker tab, so here we are, all of the containers reinstalled into the fresh Docker image. And everything's working perfectly. No data has been lost at all. And just to prove that, let's open up MB here. It's running perfectly, and if I log into a user here... Safe now, everything's led line. Doc Brown, you sneaky little, I told you not to come back into this video. They found me, I don't know how, but they found me. Okay guys, what can I say with that? I think it brings us to the end of this video. Anyway guys, if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share with anyone who you think might also find it useful, and I'll catch you in the next video.